hopefully we're okay with that. Great. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to put, in case people didn't download the source sheet, um, I'm going to put that in the chat. It's it's kind of this, it's mostly from the same from last week with a couple of tweaks. So um, last time we I did like a whole kind of lecture uh, about some of the origins of Hasidism and some of the, the initial figures. And, um, and, uh, and we're not going to do that this time. We're going to go a little more uh, into one, in a couple of sh very short texts by the Baal Shem Tov and, um, and a kind of particular emphasis of, of his. Um, but I want to just begin uh, circling back to the text that we 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 did a bit of at the at the end, but I felt like there was a few elements of it that we didn't quite fully do justice to, and 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 so I wanted to return to it, and maybe for some of you it's it's a it's a new text, so um, it's this first text on your sheets and um, and as I as I mentioned um, it's it's probably the Baal Shem Tov we don't know uh, exactly it might be um, it's a chance it could be the Magid of, of Mezrich or a different early Hasidic leader but it, it certainly has a Baal Shem Tovish feel and, and was included in this compilation of texts called uh, Sefer Baal Shem Tov, a uh, later compilation. And, um, and, uh, and, and so we were, you know, we, we, the way I introduced this text is we were talking about kind of the underlying Hasidic view of, of reality. And, um, and, Another way of languaging what that is, and especially in terms of putting it in like a broader kind of interreligious, um, interspiritual kind of context, it, and, and it's also one of, I think, the special qualities of Hasidism is that um, Hasidism was the first like large scale movement to give expression to what you could call Jewish non duality. So I don't know if non-duality is like, you know, a completely foreign term to, to some of you. It might be, some of you might be more used to it. Um, it's, um, it's a kind of spiritual term that um, comes out of the Indian tradition, but it's, it's kind of applied to, to a number of, of other uh, you know, pretty much all the major spiritual traditions have what you could call non-dual elements, and 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 in our context, it's it's basically it's a it's a kind of radical view because it's it's contrary to how humans um, usually perceive the world, how our you know our our minds and nervous systems are structured, because it's you know we we seem to pursue perceive a world of of duality of 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 separation right we seem to be individual people uh you know things my lamp seems to be you know all you know a series of different objects and there's the kind of fundamental subject object relationship that divine that defines humans you know relationship to most uh, to most things, and um, and so in in all of these non-dual traditions, there's a sense that 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 fundamental sense of separation is actually illusory. That even though the world uh, looks chopped up into all these different elements, that is not the way it really is in in reality, and. Um, and in and in Hasidism, because it's a non because it's a theistic language. So unlike you know, there's non-dual expressions of Buddhism. <clears throat> People might be familiar with it, particularly the like Mahayana and, and beyond. 
where you'll you know you'll see your, your teachings of like it's all you know there's nothing outside of mind right they'll they'll use the term mind like a non-theistic term so in the in, in the Hasidic uh view there's nothing outside of of uh of god uh and or there's nothing or though sometimes the language of like there's no separation from god or there's you know we 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 seem to feel ourselves separate from god certainly the you know a normal straight look at the bible seems you know god seems to be a very separate kind of being but the hasidic view is 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 quite radical and contrary to that and, and this view exists a little bit in in not maybe more than a little bit in in Kabbalah and earlier Jewish mysticism, but Hasidism is really the first time it gets popularized on a larger scale beyond a kind of more limited elite group of, of Kabbalists, that this was a kind of way of seeing the world and experience, really experiencing the world that, that, that people were very excited to, to share. Um, so that's kind of the setup for, um, for this view and it's for this text, uh, you know, that it's this kind of view that you, that you essentially kind of train in, in the, in the Hasidic tradition, you know, other traditions have their own kind of view texts, but it will look, we're going to look later at kind of one of the, the slogans of that view that, you know, that, that we see repeated, uh, many, many times all over Hasidic texts, but that goes back to the Baal Shem Tov. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm not going to quite do the whole text here. Um, I'm going to just do a part of it. So we're going to start uh, kind of at the end of the first paragraph. Um, so, right, so he's, you know, he's, he's saying that, you know, that seeing that you're, that it's a high level or it's a, a level to which one would aspire to, 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 to feel the <clears throat> divinity surrounding one on, on all sides and, and as a continual sense, you know, a, um, a, a continued experience, not one that ideally one has to re remember all the time. And and he says at the end of this paragraph to, to realize that God is, in, in, in his terms, the, the place of the world. In the Hebrew, mekomo shalolam. And, and this, um, this is a, a riff on a, um, a famous earlier, I think it's from Maybe from Bereshit Rabbah, from the earlier Midrashic text that said, God is the place of the world, but the world is not God's place. And this is, this earlier text is then picked up by this kind of non-dual Hasidism as, um, oh, and I, by the way, you know, feel free to stop me, right? <laughs> like raise, raise your hand either, um, uh, uh, you know, on the reactions thing or, or just stop and unmute or something with, with a question. But um, so I'm going to kind of open, try and open up this text a little bit more, raise a couple of, of the elements up and then, and then we'll, we'll consider it uh, a little, a little bit more together. Um, so that God is the, oh, okay, Tiana. Yes. Um, Hi, I wanted to know what year the text was written. Oh, sure. Um, this is from, uh, or I think, 1790s. This is from an early, one of the earliest collections of Hasidic teachings called, even though I, I'm pulling it from a, a later text called Sefer Baal Shem Tov, but it originally comes from a text that I, I don't own the whole thing of, Likutim Yakarim, which is, I think, like 1792, um, that it's... Um, teachings that are attributed to the Baal Shem Tov and the Magid of Mezrich and, and some other teachers, but they're often not attributed in the actual text. Um, so this is, yeah, but late, 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 late 1700s. Um, 
so you know eastern eastern europe um you know ukraine area uh uh um may there be peace sent to the this that place on on the map at this time maybe this you know learning in a way could be dedicated to uh somehow efforts for for peace in that region um as you know without that region we wouldn't have the you know certainly as jews it's this is that's the cradle of, of a lot of these teachings uh geographically um so so this idea is so god is the place of the world i and this is like the makom right you've probably heard um like hamakom um you know one of the names of of god uh we say you know hamakom may the may the place you know comfort you you know the place that is the place of all places right the place that is holding everything but the world is not god's place so this is classically this is like called panentheism right uh, that's the philosophical term that they use that that god is i you know that everything within the world is an ex, is an expression of divinity but divinity it still is in, in is is not just limited to the world is beyond the world so he's kind of referencing that text, but not quite, you know, spelling all of that out. Um, uh, but that, you know, so God is the, the makom shalolam, is the, the, the place of, of the world. That is to say that God was there, it, it divinity was there before the world was created, and, and the world exists um within stands within the blessed creator right that's what he means by 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 you know that we're, we're we are by by virtue of being in the universe you are currently being held by by god on uh, in this view right this is not a this is not a um a kind of you know anthropomorphic sense of divinity um and then uh in the hebrew so i'm now jumping to the next par paragraph but uh in the hebrew it's jumping a little bit but um and that that one should can contemplate that the blessed creator is is the ein Sof, is the is the endless one encompassing all of the worlds and that it's uh divine energy or shefa flows from above to, to below through through different channels through tsinorot in all of the worlds and then, you know, we're always walking within the blessed creator, right? That same sense of it's like, um, it's almost like, um, like we're fish. And, and like in this kind of metaphor, it's not really a metaphor, but this kind of, I guess it's sort of a metaphor, this kind of view, like we're fish and, and this is, and divinity is like the water. Right, it's like surrounding us. It's in you know, it's enlivening us. You know, all of this is mostly un, is unconscious to us. You know, from this perspective, until we start waking up to or or, or training in or taking on or, or being you know trying to cultivate this understanding. But we're we're walking within the blessed creator. We can't make a single move without its shefa or, or vitalizing energy. Um, and, um, you know, I remember last time we kind of talked about, you know, we, you know, whether we're, we're not necessarily feeling the Shefa and like the, the challenges of spiritual practice and, 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 and so forth. But I, um, I wanted to make clear to follow up from last time that, it, that from the view of this text, it, it doesn't really matter if we're feeling crappy or, <laughs> or we're feeling like an amazing flow of, of vitality through our beings and our bodies and our lives and our relationship. He's saying that, you know, just by virtue of being alive, we are continually receiving the divine flow, the shefa and the vitalizing energy known as is from the from the word of for chai or alive um that that's just part of um uh being uh being alive and so 
And so that starts to be where like the, the, the gratitude comes in when we, you know, if we're attracted to this, we begin to like, just notice this and not take for granted our, our kind of basic sense of aliveness or, 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 you know, vitality of basic, uh, life energy that we can feel, uh, in our, in our bodies. Um, so that was, I just wanted to open that up a little bit more, but, but I certainly want to, um, and we got to hear a little bit from people of initial reactions to this text last time, and maybe there's further uh, reactions or questions or like what it's like to encounter this kind of theology, um, you know, if it's exciting, if it's off-putting or, 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 you know, what you're, what this brings up for you. Uh, Evan, yeah. I just think it's it's interesting that it's a theology that I think a lot of people would be just surprised would be found in, in 18th century Jewish writings because they would think it's either something that's only coming from Eastern religions or only being talked about in the last 50 years or something and the fact that these very traditional Jewish, well, I mean, it was revolutionary at the time in a way, but but to us traditional Jewish texts have this this idea is, is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for saying that. I mean, I, I, I and that's. Um, I mean, I, I certainly was never exposed to anything like this, in, you know, in my initial Jewish training. And it was when I first started discovering texts and teachings like this, because I was coming into Judaism from like um, uh, a number of intensive months in the Zen Buddhist tradition, right? So. So, you know, which is a very uh, intense kind of non-dual vision. Um, if anyone's ever, you know, encountered Zen, Zen Buddhist texts, but but like Evan saying that this is this kind of under here's how it's given Jewish language essentially. I'm not saying it's the exact same thing as as Zen Buddhism, but it's there it or or other Eastern traditions, but it's. It's of a it's of a similar approach, and and here's how it's you know expressed in a native Jewish idiom. Um, thanks. Yeah, Brian. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I think a lot of this can be derived from the philosophies of Rabbi Yitzhak Luria of Svat, uh in the doctrine of the Tzitzun, the withdrawal of some of the light, but uh, the world create, is created within the dimming of the light, but the light does not go out, and the light is part of God. So all creation is part of God. Uh, and I think it has to do with a fundamental uh, jumping off point. Is God something wholly other? Or is God something accessible? Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, you know, the extension of a, an accessible God would be that, uh, at least in my way of thinking, that uh, then we are part of God and the doctrine of the one, the one God, is that there would be nothing that exists outside of that one God. That one God is the unity of creation, and all of creation exists within that one, that oneness. Uh, I don't know, it's just rambling thoughts on that. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, I don't want to, it's an interesting thing about the Simsum and Isaac Luria. I don't want to, uh, that would be a lot to unpack for other people. It's an interesting point, but, but really what you're saying at the end is, is pretty much the, the view here that, that, uh, that we are, that, that creation is a, a kind of, uh, emanation or extension or expression of divinity, which, includes uh, each of 
each of us and uh, you know all life, really all 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 things in general. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Karen, yeah. So I'm a little confused. I'm more or less following your, to the extent I can, the extent I can put my head in this place about um, right. our relationship with God or in this world, but out of this world, that conversation. What I'm having trouble with was what you started with tonight, this duality or non-duality. And I'm, and I guess the example being saying that we can't talk about subjects and objects that they're they're not dual that i, I i've i've lost the connection i don't oh, get okay. that conversation about non-duality and what we've gone into in the reading and if i'm the only one who's lost on that we can postpone it for another no, time no thanks um um so like the sense of the the human being in this text right is is like i think uh, i mean i don't know how to say it better than the kind of like the the um the water metaphor is pretty so like the the, the interpenetrated by you know being both within and surrounded by and like a fish that's being like if we're in water we're not like being being nourished <laughs> and and deriving our existence from the medium of the water right we just go into water but a fish is like both existing and surrounded by and is deriving their 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 literal you know life and existence from the water. And so that's like the sense of, you know, they're not really, they're, they're, non duality in this context is like inseparability, right? Is like complete, you know, connection of like the life force that is both giving life to the fish and at the same time is like surrounding and holding the fish. Um, and, and so that, so that's what this view is saying, um, you know, on, on, on one level, you know, we're feeling that life force, uh, the Shefa through being uh, alive, but there's, but we're just in the very medium surrounding us or in I, this. So in the traditional view, maybe what I'm having trouble with What's the traditional view? What's the dual? Give me the example. Well, with yeah, the fish sure. The it would water. be like we're standing. So, right, one of the radical things about this text, yeah, I think, is like we're standing. But traditionally, we'd say like you're standing before God, right? Like you know, before you do the Amida, you take two, three steps back and three steps forward. In in the rabbinic idea, you imagine you're standing before the King of Kings or something, right? Okay. So there's no like any place you're standing. From this view, you're already within God, and okay. and there's no there's no getting away. There's no <laughs> there's okay. no hiding Thank you. here. That that helps a little more. That was helpful. That, that, that's Thank kind you. of the radical. Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. So that's like that's the shift from like a more standard traditional rabbinic theology that is that is that the Baal Shem Tov say is trying to kind of, you know, awaken people or, or excite people with. Yes, Val. I'm having a problem because for me, the quote standing before divinity is simply the human capacity of acknowledging and, and hopefully showing gratitude. Uh, it's not saying that, that we're separate and apart. It's simply being aware as humans have that capability that we are part of the water and that the water is holding and surrounding us. So, you know. Yeah, great. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I would argue, I mean, I, we could look at other like traditional texts when it seems yeah. to be more, uh, more of, a, of a clearly, you know, sort of you're facing God and, and you and God are not a continuity. 
I, I think it's you know fair to say in a lot of traditional Jewish theology, you and God are not a a, a continuity. <laughs> um, it is not saying you know you are the omnipotent God, but that this is their language for you know that we are expressions okay. of it. Um, Whatever. Uh, uh, Chrissy and Jessica. Um, yeah. Um, actually, what Evan said about the book Finding God, I just had to go grab my copy. Would this kind of be like what Spinoza was saying? Mm. Um, because I actually wow. just pulled the, uh, the book up and it says like Spinoza rejecting this dualism maintain that mind and matter are two different forms of the same and only sustenance, neither one above the other. And so like uh, God is not the creator of the universe. God and the universe are synonymous. And I think that's... Is that kind of what we're yeah so <laughs> I, I i i don't um i don't have very much direct experience of spinoza but he he so he's kind of my sense he's classically treated as a pantheistic mm -hmm. um fate and so that's like what he just said what you the last line that you said that god and the universe are synonymous so this view that I was saying earlier is maybe kind of jargony, but it is a pan panentheistic view, which means that like while there's there, the universe is an expression of of God. There's also you know there's a, oh, I see. levels of of God um, that are beyond um, the universe that are you know that's the that's the rabbinic quote of that that they that they then pull the rabbinic quote of god is the place of the world but the world is not god's place like the world doesn't contain um god josh can you but, spell that word uh yes i'll put it in the chat yeah um i'm trying to sound it out in my mind and, it's not and, working real well yeah yeah and then the is panentheism P-A-N-E-N? Uh, I, I just put in the chat. P-A-N-E-N. Oh. oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, all right. That's what I thought I heard. And, um, and um, yeah, I mean, well, so I, you know, Spinoza, the, I mean, this is a kind of radical view. I mean, that Spinoza then, you know, was kind of excommunicated and he left the Jewish community. Uh, I, there's a whole... Yeah. Um, you know, the Hasidic, the, the Rebbe's were still, they were all sort of staying within the, the confines of traditional Jude Jewish oh, okay. practice. Um, but, but yes, Spinoza is, it, if I knew more Spinoza, I could put this more in direct dialogue <laughs> with Spinoza. Sorry, sorry, I don't have that background. Um, Jessica had a, a question. Yeah. I'm going to apologize for this question in advance. Yeah. Um, so it, if I'm understanding, like if the, I, I wrote down this quote from the um, reading, the world exists within the blessed creator. So if mm -hmm. all of the universe, the world as we know it, the world that we don't know, you know, beyond what we know, it all exists within this, you know, I don't know what the word is for it, but you know, within this this energy, this being, this yeah, you know, this fill in yeah. blank. What <laughs> about? <laughs> so, how does it work? Like, like people's actions and decisions. How does that translate? Is is all of that preordained, predecided? Is it? Um, like I'm, I'm thinking like if, if we're all within the blessed creator, can, how could you ever be without it? Um, and, how could you ever be without it in like, without? Like, like on the outside of it, could you, could you do something or, 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 you know, like make a decision that takes you outside of that realm um, of being within the creator? 
Yeah. So it, no, this it's a great question. Um, so that's exactly what I was getting at, <laughs> Nikki. Uh, it, it, free will. Um, it, it's a deep question. Um, so I guess I'll start with just the way it kind of the end of the text um, we started to talk to last time and um, speak about last time is that you know we that the divine energy is uh, is flowing from uh, you know above to below as it were through these different channels and so um, from a, a a traditional perspective we can do things to either um, maximize or inhibit though that that flow um, and that is, and that is really like how um, prayer then becomes understood as like is is really trying to like clear those channels um and, and that's why the the you know the practitioner is has kind of like an activist role um and and the mitzvoter then understood as like conduits for that shefa um and then you know conversely uh it would um could would cut off those flows like you know god for you know people doing terrible things to uh another person would you know would then you know through human ignorance would then be um would would be uh you know causing like a uh, a rupture uh with that you know flow of 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 energy and 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 shefa um yeah that's uh, uh that, that's a little bit um i we i may have um more to 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 say about it um you know you'll see things in like well, right. So I guess I guess I would also say like because um, in the Kabbalistic worldview, there are um, there are elements within existence that are called like shells that are called in the Kabbalistic yes. worldview they're called klipot, which are like um, that that when the and we're actually going to see this I think we'll see this in a text the next time jumping back to Brian's original thing that I said we we we're we're not going to talk about I'll try to do this like really really quick so with with within the lurianic like the kabbalistic lurianic cosmogonic process um that the worlds were created, but there was a kind of rupture and, and the, the, the world as they were created kind of shattered these vessels that were receiving divine light to become the world and the vessels uh, shattered. That's called the, the breaking of the, of the vessels. There was kind of a catastrophe of sorts and the light kind of um, fell, the sparks uh, that are divine light fell into this world and these sparks are encased within shells that are called the klipot. And the klipot are also made ultimately of divine light, but it's like a very kind of... Um, very difficult to access, um, uh, very um, hard, uh, congealed, um, opaque kind of divine light. And so 
So from the Kabbalistic view, there's things that you can do to like raise the sparks. Um, this is actually, I'm trying, and what I'm basically explaining is the, or the Kabbalistic origins of Tikkun Olam. This is where Tikkun Olam, you know, to, 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 <laughs> to bring it back to something that we all know, so you don't just feel like this is totally crazy, but, um, this is the, the primary origin of the idea of tikkun olam is that, you know, in the, the breaking of the vessels in the cosmic gonic process, the sparks fell and they're scattered throughout the world. And then these sparks could be raised or they could be, or through human action could strengthen the klipot, the shells. This is also what we're, this is also the basis for the Tubishvat Seder as well, just to make another little connection to the reality or to something we might have some familiarity with. And like, I don't, the traditional sources don't talk about this, but like, we could understand the klipot of like the shells of like our own kind of guarding and like deep, you know, most people who are doing really horrific things in the world are deeply, deeply invested consciously or unconsciously in the view of separation in like thinking that they are autonomous, um, you know, self-existing beings that can, that are out to get stuff for their, their own self. And so that kind, and, and so we all have that capacity, right? So there is free will in this whole system. Like, uh, just to go back to that question, there's free will, but then we have the choice of whether we kind of strengthen the negative forces within the system, which are called klipot, or do we, um, you know, strengthen the positive forces within the system through mitzvot and acts of kindness. And, you know, and that's why tikkun olam became so important for people in a, like an activist worldview. Um, okay, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> Thank you. That helps. That, that, that helping helps. a little bit. Um, uh, okay, I may have something else useful to say about that later. But um, uh, Karen, yeah, I, I've I've heard it explained that like um, everybody is connected to God by you know metaphorical strings. And these these strings are really elastic, and you can you know sometimes you're you're feeling very close and that sort of oneness, but other times the the string gets longer and longer and longer. I mean, it never would break, but it just keeps on expanding and expanding, and it's through like you know like you were saying, there are different actions and different things that you do that make it expand or contract. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and part of what this Hasidic view is trying to do is just like wake people up to the the string that, you know, which is literally what he's, you know, he's saying that there's these channels, pipelines, Tsino wrote, you know, of the string of, you know, flowing into us of our, of our life energy at like the most uh, basic level and trying to, to wake people up to their inherent connectedness um uh or non-separateness from from divinity um you know and and trying to, and 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 try and basically creating a an approach to Judaism that is that's what it's what's what it's oriented towards doing Just one last thing about the sparks and this is like um this is germane to Hasidism is is that uh, early Has Hasidism in particular is is that, as we talked about last time, of that they saw, you know, they wanted to extend spiritual practice beyond uh, Torah and tefillah, be, beyond Torah study and, and prayer and meditation into the elements of, of physical life, um, of eating, drinking, um, lovemaking, uh, business, uh, like, you know, dealing, doing your, your work in the world. Um, we're going to read a text next time. That's a kind of like, what I would say is like this, a way that the view is actualized in terms of dealing with difficult people. 
um, you know, uh, of how the, you know, one Rebbe's response about that kind of question. But so when you're, when they're eating and drinking and with awareness of the divine vitality that is within, you know, a given piece of food or, or, or drink, then the sparks are being raised. And if, and in the traditional language, if then if you're eating and you're just like stuffing your face and, you know, and, and you're eating with no awareness other than like, it's so wonderful and tasty and you're just kind of gluttonously, you know, devouring something, then you're strengthening the klipot, <laughs> as it were. That's like one, that's like one classical early Hasidic uh, example. Um, but it, you know, it's a way of bringing holiness to, uh, to daily life in an even more intensive way. I mean, Judaism has always been about that, right? I mean, it's the basic right thing of brachot, but this is like, this is like taking it to another level of experience, uh, with this approach. Um, let's see, I do want to do a little, uh, our next, uh, can we go on to our next, uh, text these were all like fantastic questions um and uh you know i i i i really appreciate all of them because i i like this text because i feel like it's a it's one of the best concise definition concise expressions of the hasidic view but there's a lot to unpack uh as you can as you can see so let's look at our next texts um these are shorter, and um, so this is, um, and these are more uh, almost certainly uh, Baal Shem Tov. And the um, were you going to share screen these? Um, I put. Oh, let me put them in the chat again. Um, I ideally like to not share screen them, so I oh, can okay. see everyone. Sorry, everyone. Um, let me just put it back in the chat. Um, I just, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right. So these are the, it says the Baal Shem Tov on divine imminence. Um, so, so we're going to go a little more into like, you know, there's divine transcendence and there's divine imminence and, um, and it's all one, <laughs> but these can be kind of teased out. And, uh, you know, for uh, the sake of practice and understanding. And so one of the things about um, Hasidism is there, there's a number of, of slogans that they used in their texts and probably orally, uh, Certainly, uh, well, I'm most of the, many most of the texts were originally oral, anyway. Um, and one of the ones they 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 love the most and seems to go back to the Baal Shem Tov is that is the text Malo Kol Haaretz Kivodo, which um, hopefully you uh, you rings a bell uh, from the. Uh, Nikki, did you have a question? Or oh no, okay. Um, as, um, as, uh, from the Kedusha prayer, uh, either the Kedusha, uh, that's before the Shema, or we might be more familiar from the Kedusha that's chanted out, out loud when we're standing in the middle of the Amidah, this, these words that all, that go all the way back to Isaiah, Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzivaot, um, which you have down at the very, so you have this down at the very bottom of your page. Um, holy, holy, ho holy is the, is the God of all forces or multiplicity. I'd like to kind of translate it at Sivaot is like all forces, all powers. Um, but they don't quote the first half of it. They really quote the second half. Malo kol haaretz kevodo. Malo is, is full. Uh, malo is the word for full. Kol is all. Haaretz is the earth, the land. Kavodo is um, 
difficult to translate. Um, its presence, its glory, literally his, but as you're getting the sense, like, I don't, to talk about God in this way, it doesn't make any sense to me to say his or, or her, really, for that matter. It's a, it's not a, it doesn't, there's a, not a gendered in the normal, so I, I say it's. Um, uh, so Kavodo is literally it's, presence or its glory. Um, so people might know some other meanings of that word kavod. Um, uh, um, any, what, are, what are some of the other meanings people know? Uh, you're, you're saying just kavod is honor, respect, um, right. raising yes. up. That what I'm was the last one? Raising up, elevating. Uh, you know, I don't know in our current so to give you know, lifting to, up, yeah. we would say in today's speak. Uh, to, yeah, to like give kavod to, right? So honor, respect. Yes, that is. Um, you know, when we say like kol ha kavod or something like that, and you know, all of the honor, all of the respect to give kavod to someone, it's the same word. That's not the usage even uh, in you know here in Isaiah or 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 elsewhere. But um, but it is it is just interesting like that that's it's the same word, uh, mm -hmm. just in terms of playing with the Hebrew. Um, other meanings of it that people know, or or related meanings. Um, um, kaved is heavy. Um, Something that is like kvedut uh, is like heaviness. So there's like a, a, a heaviness quality, uh, gravity, uh, even like to some the gravitas, I guess. Yeah, weightiness, I think. Yeah, I mean, literally, the, the dual meaning of heavy there, you know, that, that sense. Weightiness, of, yeah. Yeah, we're using gravitas, I think, probably is more. Like and, um, and, and, you know, when you see this, this verse um, translated, the conventional way it's translated is either like the entire earth is filled with the divine presence or also div uh, the divine glory. Sometimes glory is also a translation of kavod. Um, and, um, and uh, so, my train of thought um and oh so, so you know there's a like there's at the very end of exodus it um the very end of the book of exodus there's this section where it says moses isn't able to enter into the mishkan into the tabernacle because the the cloud the divine cloud and the kavod uh was too thick or was like so there's a sense of like the present the divine presence was too palpably intense for moses to enter the tabernacle so that's uh part of the the sense of of present uh, uh why i could by translating his presence is good but I also think that glory sometimes is also good too, because I feel like the way that this verse is used over and over again in the Hasidic bumper sticker is, is, is like cultivating a view of, of the, the whole earth is filled with the divine radiance, like, you know, the glory radiance of like the, the eyes to, you know, to see the divine vitality. Um, uh, and it, it was a little different sense of the presence. Um, and um, and the last thing I'll just say is that this could also be translated, it never is translated this way, but you could translate this line as the fullness of the earth uh, is, is the divine kavod, is its kavod, which is interesting. Like, so to the the you know the the fullness then like the 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 bounty the the voluptuousness the fecundity the full you know the shefa of the earth you know the abundance of the earth its fullness 
that is the uh, divine presence or the divine glory or it's all of these different ways. Are, this isn't even that Hasidic yet what we're doing. This is just like kind of teasing apart this verse that they like. Val, are you going to say something? I, I, I'm, I'm hearing Heschel in my head. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Um, uh, yeah, la, that's a different psalm. La right, 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 right. But it's yeah. the same. Yeah. La same Adonai Haaretz um lo. Right, yeah, right. The earth, um, yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm just you know, mm -hmm. free yeah. associating here. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's like kind of the setup. Um, and um, so, so this first text, it's not saying something so new, but um, but it it's kind of explicitly linking this this verse in. So that's kind of why I brought it to you. So um, maybe if would someone that one's pretty straightforward. If would someone would be willing to read that one, text one. Anyone? I'm happy to. It, um, top of page two. Yeah. Okay. The blessed creator is found in every movement. It is impossible to make a single movement or speak a single word without the power of the blessed creator. And this is the meaning of the verse. The entire earth is filled with the divine presence or glory. And, and from Sefer Baal Shem Tov. Yeah. And this is from a, this is almost certainly kind of a Baal Shem Tov saying, um, right? So when he would say, you know, he's kind of giving a sense of what he means when he's like repeating this, this, line of Malokol Haaretz Kavodo, that we're trying to cultivate this understanding, it means that, you know, that, that every movement that we're, that any of us is making is being facilitated by that, you know, by that one that is, that is Malo at Kol Haaretz, is filling the whole earth, right? Us, us included, right? That's how we can then move um uh let's do a let's do a couple other ones i uh, let's see i think i need to do the next one because it's a little bit i spent a while trying to translate this one as a, I, I translated it differently this week than i did last week even though i included the text last week um so <clears throat> so on the verse, the local arts kavodo, the entire earth is filled with the divine presence. Oh, and I should say also, like, part, you know, part of the way these like view texts work, like this is a view slogan. This actually exists um, in Tibetan Buddhism as well. I, I, there's a whole I have like a book on like these slogans that you know that are spiritual slogans that practitioners are encouraged to use to to train in to cultivate. Um, and like say, you know, it's like a kind of fortune cookie or something. It's like a, you know, pithy short saying. And, um, and that's really how this text is, is, is used. Um, it's kind of like a fake it till you make it, uh, sort of thing. Like it's, you know, until you, you know, you're aspiring to the, to the, towards the view until it actually becomes the view, or at least it becomes I don't know, for myself, it becomes my experience some of the time, not all the time, um, but but enough of the time that I feel like, oh, there's really something here. Like it is possible to to see and experience the world this way. Um, OK, so. This is like the next teaching in Sefer Baal Shem Tov, like on, you know, with these with these uh, words. Um, the divine kavod, the, the presence of the glory should be or the glory uh, should be understood in the sense of a, a garment. Uh, in Hebrew, the, a levush. And the Baal Shem Tov seems to be basing that on, um, in this page in Talmud, where the word kavod is, is, is garment is used as a synonym, synonym of kavod. Um, um, i.e. the blessed name 
the whole, you know, the, the blessed name, as it were, is enclosed, nuvash, is enclosed, garmented, even in all materiality, which is called gashmiut. And that is the, the meaning of the, the verse, malo kol haaretz kevodo, even materiality is the garment of, of God, is the divine garment. This is a little bit of a different language than, than before. Uh, and it, it's, um, it's kind of, uh, uh, drawing on Kabbalah as well uses this languages of, of, of garmenting, um, and, you know, in the gar, Sometimes they, they don't want to say, and this is again like the panentheistic view. This is like, they don't want to say that it's the essence of divinity. There still is like held, there's still like the, the essence of divinity that is like beyond the garment, but, but materiality is, is the garment. And normally, like when we think of garmenting, right, with our clothing, <clears throat> It has a, you know, my sweater seems to be separate from my skin, right? So it seems to be kind of a separation metaphor, but um, but, uh, but they also use. So I'll just throw out this third text that um, text text just below that. So text number three that is a, a commonly used garmenting metaphor that again actually comes from the earlier midrash but is picked up by the uh, hasidim certainly as a metaphor for the relationship of god and creation or you could say god and, and materiality and they say and this is i think just an amazing image you know right out of uh this is even out of rabbinic Judaism, but it really gets amplified in, Has in Hasidism. Like a snail whose garment is an inseparable part of it. That that is, that that's the, that's, I, I'm, a, I'm, I think that is more of the type, instead of garmenting like clothing, which is clearly separate from that which it clothes, which seems to be clearly separate from that's what, that which it is clothing, like my body or your body, right? But the garment of a snail, the shell of the snail, has been created by the inner, you know, the inner body of the snail or the hermit crab or whatever is like, has, has emanated this, uh, it's, you know, it's garment, it's, it's, it's shell. Um, so, <laughs> okay, that. it's me again, sorry. So no, no. in human terms, our garment is like our skin. I mean, without it, we have no form. It literally is what, what we wear. Uh, and, and so you, you can take the whole body as being our garment, but if you take the most obvious, it's our shell. Mm -hmm. the skin i guess i mean i I'm, I'm trying to you know pull these pieces together with difficulty um thanks thank you for that um so um Well, other comments or questions so far on these texts and like a kind of, uh, Evan, yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to wrap my head around that metaphor. It's like God is the snail and the material universe is the shell. So it's on God, but also part of God. And yeah, the God, on, God's the whole snail, not just the squishy part. And the material, <laughs> the material universe is the shell. And there's other, there's more to God but everything is God, everything is the snail. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> this guy like the squishy part, right? The, the, the squishy part that is uh, beyond the material uh, universe. Yes. Um, 
and um and right so it's like the whole so then the the the, the um <clears throat> so the 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 interesting thing about this i think is is like the imminentist view meaning so you know, the Baal Shemto even says, like, Malokol Haaretz, the earth is filled with the divine glory, right? So this is, like, about how divinity is present on our level of our material world, or um, at least trying to uh, wake us up to that. But the, the earth it's really like <clears throat> linked in in the Kabbalistic Hasidic imagination of the earth, the body, and the divine presence are all kind or or the or the Shekhinah really is we, we probably heard that as the as the divine presence before um, under which is like uh you know, held as feminine, but um, feminine in the sense of uh, imminent here. Um, and so there, so this is a, there's a kind of like earthiness. Um, it's a celebration really of, of the divine, like from this view of, of bringing our attention to, to the body. Uh, as well. I mean, it's even like that's part of what he's saying with the first text, right? Is like that, like through our bodies, through being able to move, um, we, uh, that is through the, you know, the divine vitality that we're receiving. Yeah, Dan. So a question about all this. Um, if this is all more about imminence, so that God is in everything, and even though God is greater than the world, the world is part of God. How does this affect prayer? Um, because prayer in some way feels like it's very dualistic. Um, and is, or I mean, or is that only one aspect of prayer and, and part of prayer or meditation is experiencing God? or godness, as opposed to the dualistic approach of praying to God. <clears throat> so are you going to be here next week? I think so. <laughs> I may, I may try and answer your question next week because it's, okay. it's, um, it's a little hard, um, hard to, to do. Um, okay. Um, and, um, in a way, I think I want it, to. It's a little bit of a different direction. Um, okay. Okay. But, I, but it's a, it's a great question. Um, but and so I, I did write it down. Um, um, uh, so let's see. I'm debating. So I want to like. There's like kind of an experiential connection here. But but should we do a song or should we do a short like meditative? practice to connect with this a little bit. Um, anyone have any? Go for the meditative. Meditative? All right. Okay, great. We'll do the song next time then. Okay. So, well, some of you have actually been doing this meditative, meditative practice, but um, so um, right, right. So the important thing in this verse, so now this is a little bit more like neo-Hasidism. <laughs> like you got, you saw a little bit of like Hasidism in the traditional text of the Baal Shem Tov, but, but this, like the, the neo-Hasidism, like re reading this is so that this that the the fullness of the earth, which we're going to also include, is the fullness of the body as well. That is 
that is the site of the experiencing of the divine presence. And so, and so on the one hand, this is a really wonderful, like kind of nature connection teaching, I feel like, because it's, it's encouraging us to like see, uh, you know, the earth as, as filled with the, with the, the divine presence. Um, but it's also, uh, that the body is also a site of that. And that is through the fullness, through, through, through the feeling of, through the deep sensory fullness of the, of the body. And, um, let's see, so we may go like just a couple minutes over, but so I'll, I'll try and, uh, so we're going to do a short body scan practice that, that, for me is a way of, of experiencing some of this um, fullness um, uh, with, within the sight of, of, the, of the body. Um, the, you know, the, the, the fullness of the, the, of the div, of, and it's literally is, is presence. It's, a, it's like the fullness of the divine presence in the body. Um, so I'm going to try and give us a taste of that in 10 or 12 minutes <laughs> or your money back. Um, no, it's a basic, for those of you who've been with me, we've done this a few times. It's the basic body scan practice. But when I've done it just with the practice, now you've, for you, for those of you who've done it before, now you have like a whole kind of theoret theoretical kind of Hasidic arc, you know, intellectual architecture around it. But, um, but it's, it's really a wonderfully simple grounding practice, right? It's grounding because this is Malokal Haaretz. This is like, and this is the divine, this is divine imminence, which can be more full and less full, you know, at times in our bodies, at times in different places in the world. Like we've all probably been places in our life that were really special places, whether in nature, maybe it was a special run or something that like, there was, you know, some kind of deeper, stronger presence that was there, right? That was the Malo Kol Haaretz in a, in a more heightened, like intensified way. It's not the same. It's not static throughout the, throughout existence. It can be uh, more intense or less intense. Okay, so uh, that's enough set up. So um, to do this, I really invite you to and uh, strongly suggest you uh, close your eyes and find um, comfortable sitting position with your feet on the ground and your spine straight. <clears throat> And just begin with following, you know, a couple, having a couple of conscious breaths as best you can, just following your breathing from the nose down into the belly. We'll begin with this practice of, of sensing into our bodies at the, at the crown of our head. Both kind of sensing the, the crown of our head, placing our awareness there. And then we're going down the body, so down into the face, and relaxing the face, relaxing around the eyes, any uh, tension or holding in the face, giving that permission to relax. And 
Feeling into the, the jaw. Now the neck, relaxing the neck, sensing, sensing into the, into the neck. Now the upper shoulders. Just Sensing in inside that upper part of the chest and the shoulders, maybe directing a little bit of breath up there to sort of fill and expand that part. Just sensing into the inside of the chest. Maybe letting the breath fill the right side of the of the chest, the left side. And then down into the arms. Upper arms into the lower arms, and into the hands, beginning with the left hand, into the fingers, just feeling into each of the left fingertips, thumb, the right fingertips. the palms of each of your hands. And feeling if there's a sense perhaps of fullness in the hands. Now, kind of continuing down into the lower belly Letting that fill with breath. Lower pelvis. And the thighs. Sensing into you can even feel into the thigh bones, feeling the, the shape of each of the thighs. Down in the legs, the calves. Feeling into each of the, the calves. You can feel into the bones of the calves. And down into the feet. The contact of the feet on the floor. Feeling the shape of each foot. Feeling, sensing into each of the toes. You can do that. Now, kind of sensing into the arms and the legs. And 
Just really sense as much as you can, that same kind of inner sensing, but directed into the arms and the legs at the same time. Maybe in the whole body, notice that you can really sense the into the whole the whole body, the fullness of the whole body, each of our beings. It's aliveness. So notice if there's maybe a little bit of a pulsating quality or just how that feeling of aliveness as you kind of sense into your whole body what that's like. When you're ready you can open your eyes and and you can still um You can um, maintain a sense of connectedness even with that sensing um, as you open the eyes. So you might feel it as like a, even just a sense of presence of, of greater presence in the body of, of of a little, maybe a little bit of a heaviness. Um, particularly, I tend to feel it more, other people I know as well, I, feeling it in the hands. Um, okay. So that that's um, kind of an example of, um, of what I mean <laughs> by Malokal Haaretz Kivodo, of like how that can be, um, how, you know, I'm with all these teachings, I mean, I'm interested in them, not just as ideas, but as, as experiences. Um, and that's, um, it's one of the most direct ways I know of, 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 you know, getting into an experience of that, um, of that verse, you know, as it's, as it's understood in the, in Hasidut. Um, and this is, again, this is not a, um, a Hasidic practice. This is somewhat adapted from, uh, one guy I studied with, Tzvi Shalom, although he does the body scan a little bit differently, but, um, but um, so, um, yeah, so, I mean, I know we're at time, uh, but um, I'd uh, love to hear um, what that was like for you. And, um, uh, and I encourage you, if, if you're able to still uh, if, ask questions or, or, and even after you get off this meeting tonight to still, to play around, um, of what it's like to kind of uh, speak or uh, or move around from a, a place of connectedness to that sensing presence in in the body. Um, it's it's very subtle and it, it does tend to dissipate um, as we kind of go back to our regular mode of being. But. Um, So yeah, comments or questions or just even to just share what your experience was like with that or um, or questions on anything else we had. We uh, I'll share. Um, I really like the idea of God just being, you know, kind of like the skin that, that holds everything together. Um, and that it's just, it's, it's a constant energy um 
Mm -hmm. because I, I feel like, like I, I constantly have conversations with God and, um, I don't have to wait to be home to have a conversation with God. I can have a God at any given moment. So if I can have a conversation with God at any given moment, then that must mean that, that this presence is always there with me, around me, inside of me. And so, um, so I just really appreciate this, this kind of, um, I don't know, it, it it put into writing what I've been feeling for a very long time. It's pretty Great. cool. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll see Taryn in just a moment. Um, yeah. I mean, there. Um, that's that's great. I'm going to put one other, especially just since Nikki said that. I'm going to just because I don't think we'll get to do it next time. I'm going to put this one other text into the chat that also kind of uh, speaks, speaks to this um, in some way that is from uh, uh, another Hasidic teacher who had studied with the Baal Shem Tov a little bit, but also the Magid. Um, um, but um, we could st maybe stay on and look at it. But, uh, but Karen, I, sorry, I wanted to Thanks. I, I just wanted to kind of follow up a little with what Nikki was saying, because I think I guess I'll just kind of speak for myself. I you know I would always have sort of a very um, I would in my mind, I said it was sort of like a childlike approach to spirituality or God that, you know, the place where you are supposed to talk to God is in synagogue or, you know, at services and or if trying to find spirituality is there. But the reason I like this perspective is because, you know, you know, it kind of legitimizes that God is really anywhere and everywhere you are, you, you know, because we're all, you know, part of God. And, you know, like Nikki is saying, you can you can talk to God anywhere. And if if the you know quote spirituality of of Jewish services isn't really connecting you, you can you can go out into nature. You can be anywhere and find find meaning in it. So that's why I like this perspective a lot. So thank you for you know just bringing that out to us and emphasizing it, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, and and um, I mean certainly the being out in nature. I mean, this is a you know I mean the the Baal Shem Tov himself. I think part of why he was attracted to this verse is, you know, he had kind of a more earthy quality to him. Um, like I said last time, he was an herbalist and a healer, like he had some, you know, connection with the plant world. He he lived kind of on retreat for a number of years in the semi-retreat in the Carpathian Mountains. And, you know, and he uh, would encourage people to go out outside and, and, and in nature. And I, and I, I think that that's, you know, that was, and, you know, that's an easier place to, for mo for many people to experience the, you know, the divine presence, divine presence and, and, um, and in many contexts, the, the, the divine vitality is more palpable there, um, than it is in, you know, a concrete kind of parking lot, you know, like a parking garage or something like that. But, but is it it's, more it's there on one level, but on another, on another other level, it's not there on this. Yeah, I, it just right. kind of goes, it's sort of, um, you know, as you think kind of how when you're growing up, you were taught, you know, we go to services and that's where we, you know, pray to God, et cetera. It's, you know, like I say, it's, it's sort of like a childlike or simplistic view, I guess that maybe gets per perpetuated a little bit um, in the, some, maybe some of the more traditional uh, branches of Judaism, or maybe not, I don't know, but definitely, you know, when I was growing up, you know, that was, everything seems, seems so segmented, and this kind of just, yeah, you know, opens everything right up, which is great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and that was, that was a big part of their, you know, the, the, the one of the other verses, if we had more sessions, we'd do some times around, you know, one of their other 
it's it's a lesser known bumper sticker, but it's 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 not quite as popular as this one. But um, it's it's a verse from uh, Proverbs: "Beholderachecha da'ehu." In all of your ways, know God. You know, or maintain, or you know, or you could try like maintain awareness of of God in all of your actions. And I mean, and this is also part of like the. Um, you know, if anyone here doesn't know about the Institute for Jewish Spirituality, that's a, a great resource. Um, they've in particular brought a lot of uh, used mindfulness language uh, to connect that with a lot of Hasidic and other Jewish mystical teachings, uh, you know, particularly drawing on 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 mindfulness. Um, that's a, you know another just contemporary expression of of you know, of, of making this real in people's lives and, and, and extending one's connection to God or experience of God or, or potential for encountering or, or maintaining awareness of divinity through all of one, you know, through all of one's actions. And if, you know, it's a high bar. I mean, I'm always just, I just, I'm always so aware, like when I'm teaching this stuff, like, and I then I'm like in a more, you know, kind of contracted or like snappy or irritable place. I'm like, oh God, I'm like going to be teach, you know, teaching these like exalted ideas. Right. But then, you know, but it does help to remind myself of, of, of what I, you know, it's like, we teach what we're trying to learn. Uh, certainly. Um, but Tiana. Yeah. Yeah, for, for, thank you for this. I really enjoyed it. Um, for me, it, it was, a lot of it came down to like a rekindling of, of self-respect. When you, you talked about Kavod, I was, you know, thinking of it more on the top of, of this intrinsic respect for yourself and this source of divinity. Um, and that that's how I kind of took that and... Um, I think at that time, you know, I think they, they were very poor, uneducated masses. And, and this was this paradigm shift to, to look inward was something not, not really appreciated. So I'm, I'm sure out of it, you know, came the two extremes, came like the Haskala, the romantic intellectual movement and came the epitome of Hasidism of these two of these two movements out of out of Ukraine at the time so I, I just really enjoyed it all thank you thanks um yeah well I mean a lot of I mean the the people who are really um seriously engaging with with Hasidut are not uneducated a lot of them are they're you know historically they're they're men and they're they're you know they're really fairly well you know varying levels of some highly highly educated jewishly you know i mean they're not educated in any the 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 hasidic movement was really pretty separate from the haskalah uh, uh until you know the earlier 1800s at the time of the Baal Shem Tov. And so they, you know, they really had very little influence from, from, you know, Western, Western Europe, Europe and stuff. And they were much more in this very, very traditional, very insular world. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, well, um, Great. So maybe we'll do. There's a great song for this verse as well, too. So I'll I'll maybe share that uh, next time. That's also wonderful to practice with. And um, so maybe we'll begin with that. Didn't get to didn't get to do that today. Um, so. Oh wait. Oh, it's, I. Well, I the the challenge. I I'll just respond to your. Uh, point Nikki. I mean, I, 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 um, well, I know, I know that that's, um, hmm. so one of the ways 
I would say that, oh, maybe it's like oh, this, that's too lar large of a comment. Um, I mean, certainly the Hasidic view is they're, they're, they're finding, they are absolutely trying to find divinity everywhere. Um, from, um, no, it's, it's, I'll, I'll hold that maybe. I mean, I know this is just like silly, but um, I, I think we can find, I don't know, have you ever been sitting somewhere um, and even just listening, you hear a train, right? And the, the sound of the train, the rumble of the train just goes. And for a moment, there's just this connection, the spiritual connection to the, the bigger picture, the bigger world. It's just something so small or something so, I don't know. Um, it, it's, it's not something in nature necessarily, um, but I, I've just, I, I experience it a lot that I can just be, I, I find something that just really connects me to God and it can be something totally random. Hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it's great. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I know, I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's wonderful. I appreciate you sharing that. I, I mean, I, I do know, you know, for some people it is easier to, you know, experience a sense of, especially versus being in a building or something, a sense of connectedness to the divine, but that's, but uh, right, right. wonderful to have that more expanded sense. I mean, that's the, certainly the ideal, um, cause mostly we're, you know, we're in the world, right? We all have to be in the world. And so how do we bring that connectedness in? Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, Thanks, so, guys. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, so maybe you we'll all. hold there. And uh, so there's one more class next Monday. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that, that song uh, from this verse. And then, and then there's this great text I really love of like a kind of interpersonal take on the Hasidic view that we'll, we'll learn that. And, uh, and then I'm not sure what else. I'm still figuring that out. What, what, what else we'll do. So thank you all for for being part of this and building this collective experience. And I'll uh, see you soon. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Lato. Bye, Lato.